Hello and good evening everyone and welcome to the final session of the Organic Home Gardening webinar series organized by Dilma Conservation. Throughout the series, you have learned how to design your home garden, understand what crops to grow, how to prepare plant beds, which fertilizers to use. And today you will learn about managing pests and diseases. There are three types of certificates which will be awarded based on your attendance and completion of any interactive assignments. First is the certificate of participation, which will be awarded to those who have participated in a minimum of six webinars of the series. Then you have the certificate of merit, which will be awarded to those who have participated in a minimum of six webinars and completed some of the assignments by sending in photos as proof. And then there's the certificate of distinction, which will be awarded to those who have participated in six webinars and completed all of the assignments. Um, please note that we will evaluate all your assignments and be in touch with you within a month regarding your eligibility for a certificate. Our resource person for the day is Ms. Tanuradha Ranasinghe, who is an entrepreneur and agricultural consultant of ABBA Agro Consultancy. I welcome you on behalf of Dilma T and Dilma Conservation for today's session. If you have any questions related to today's session, you can simply put them in the Q&A tab, or you can just put them as comments uh, on the Q&A tab, but please refrain from asking questions on the chat section of the webinar. During this webinar, there will also be interesting poll questions and you are welcome to take part and make this session more interactive. So without further ado, we can uh, move on to the session, Ms. Tanuradha. Uh, <clears throat> good afternoon, all of you. Uh, happy to see you all at the final session of this webinar series. So we have came across six sessions and this will be the final. And this will be uh, somewhat uh, important session because uh, as home gardens, you all face a lot of issues, especially with uh, regarding to pests and diseases. So, so we are happy, I'm happy to explain what are the pests and what are the kinds of diseases uh, which we you will be uh, facing during your home garden journey. so i'm happy to help all the uh, the answers as much as possible and clarify what are pests or diseases and how to overcome them during this session so first of all we have a, a first poll question coming up over to johansini so the first focus today is to identify uh, whether uh, A is a pest or a disease and whether B is a pest or a disease. Um, so I'm sure you can see the poll questions on your screen. Uh, the first answer is A is a pest and B is a disease. The second answer is A is a disease and B is a pest. Third answer is both A and B are pests. And fourth answer, both A and B are diseases. So we can see some answers coming in. Um, I think we can end the poll now and see what the results are. So 50% say that A is a pest and B is a disease. Uh, well, we have about 30% who say that A is a disease and B is a pest. Anuradha, what's uh, A? Yeah, okay, uh, so it's, I think uh, my majority answered uh, well. So that means A is actually A is, uh, is mealy bug, so it's a pest, and B is powdery mildew, which is, a, which is a disease. So let's uh, move forward and let's try to identify what are the uh, differences. So. I think with the appearance, both look same, but uh, these are two different things. So let's discuss and uh, let's uh, try to sort these issues uh, when we move forward. So when we uh, when we are doing home gardening, we can find out uh, very common pests, uh, uh, mostly during the gardens. So some of them are leaf-eating caterpillars. So I think you have experience. Uh, they come and eat all your leaves, especially they are very common in the leaf vegetables and sometimes in cabbages and, and some uh, other crops like uh, 
time to time uh, they come and attack uh, other uh, crops like uh, brinjal or sometimes uh, uh, okra. So those kind of crops. But uh, so this is a very uh, Im uh, important uh, uh, insect. Uh, we need to identify leaf feeding caterpillar. So then uh, we can find brinjal uh, step borer, stem and pod borer, which is a very common uh, insect uh, available in the, especially we can find especially when we cultivate brinjal. They come and attack the uh, pod as well as the stems, stem part parts. Then again, we can find mealybug. So that's this, this is the picture you have seen in the first slide. So it's like a powdery shape, but uh, they are spreading very fast, commonly available in papaya and sometimes uh, aralia, what we call the temple flowers, and sometimes and in other crops as well, and in manioc. So once they spread, it's very hard to control. And I will explain you how to control this, uh, that, uh, uh, this, uh, this insect. Then uh, time to time you will find aphids. This is another common problem when you grow, especially radishes and some other uh, vegetables like uh, bitter gourd. They come and uh, uh, attack your plants and then your leaves will get with, with it. Then uh, fruit fry and melon fry, very common disease and very common pest. You can find when you grow all the gourds and all uh, types of melons. Then the chili leaf complex. This is a very another very common disease when you grow chili, uh, because most of the flower gardeners they fed up uh, with controlling this disease because they cannot identify uh, what is the problem. So we will discuss uh, about this pest uh, and how to control them in uh, next slide. Then if we under, uh, try to understand uh, common diseases, so this is a very common disease is a damping of. Uh, it's a sudden, sudden uh, wilt uh, when we, especially we, uh, we find this during in the early stage of the nursery period. So when you set up nurseries, uh, you, uh, if you cannot control the water levels and during, especially during the rainy season, damp, damp, damping off is very common. And wilt, so you can find wilt, uh, especially in uh, tomatoes, like crops, and again in blight also in tomatoes. So Blight is some sort of a, a burning. You can see patches because of blight, but when you uh, compare it with wilt, wilt is a withering of plant particles. Then again, you can find soft rot. So it's uh, basically common in uh, radishes and sometimes uh, uh, tomatoes. Again, uh, cucumber or watermelon. Then anthracnose, you will see some spots in the fruits. Then uh, powdery mildew. So this is another common, it's like a powdery shape, especially available in, uh, when you grow pumpkin and uh, uh, cucumber. So it's like a, it's spreading like a uh, powder over the surface of the leaves. So these are the diseases. So when you get, if you try to compare, compare so mostly pest damages are not, uh, are specific to a certain area and you can find, uh, uh, especially some missing parts or some accumulation of number of pets in certain area, uh, like that kind of symptom, symptoms. But if you can uh, compare diseases, diseases are quite different than pests because you get uh, a certain, some parts of the, it's not, it's not uh, there are no any physical damages like uh, cutting, so uh, uh, that kind of features. So, uh, and uh, diseases will happen slowly, and uh, that is the comparison we can uh, we can identify how to uh, define uh, com uh, pest disease versus a uh, pest damage versus a disease. So it's, uh, you will understand slowly when you observe these things. So when you uh, uh, when you do pest uh, when we do pest and disease management, it, prevention is very very important because we are doing most of the time organic home garden gardening so we use organic uh, pesticides and organic especially organic pest repellents and remedies to mitigate uh, the diseases so prevention is very uh, uh, important because uh, when we before uh, a disease or uh, any pest uh, spreads in our home garden we need to identify it at the, at the early stage and uh, and we need to ma make uh, take preventive measures 
uh, before it spread to the to your entire garden. So that's why we tell prevention is important. And sometimes we create very much favorable conditions in our gardens, like adding too much nitrogen fertilizer or adding too much water to our crops. Then we are creating a very much favorable conditions for disease or uh, 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 diseases or spreading of pests. So we always we need to take preventive actions uh, to control uh, before controlling uh, pests or any disease. Then control is the other uh, important part. So once we prevent, or if we couldn't prevent, uh, or we, we may be able to prevent only up to a certain level, then we need to implement control measures. So controlling means we try to avoid uh, the number of pests in our uh, garden without eliminating them. So we are not expecting 100% uh, clearance, or we are not expecting elimination of the pest of 100% uh, uh, from our uh, garden premises. We try to control and uh, mitigate the, uh, the negative impact of pest or diseases uh, uh, in our garden. So uh, we try to keep them the number low, or we try to keep the uh, disease spreading at a lower level in, uh, in control, control measures, especially when we are doing uh, home gardening. So as I discussed before, so we can uh, Use, uh, we can implement preventive measures in different ways, especially during nurseries. Uh, we can do uh, preventive measures like uh, when we set up the uh, nurseries, we can set fire and we can uh, sterilize the soil. So we can avoid adding too much uh, water and we can avoid uh, the plant density as we discussed uh, uh, before. So likewise, uh, methods we can uh, implement as preventive measures during nursery management. And we can avoid adding too much uh, uh, nitrogen-rich fertilizer during the nursery preparation. And we can follow a hardening of plants, that kind of activities which we discussed before, as preventive measures. Then during field preparation also, we need to prepare soil, uh, which uh, will be favorable for drainage. That means during the uh, excessive rains, so additional water which can be drained uh, through your garden if you uh, follow uh, raised beds or suitable field pre preparation techniques. So the, that is another uh, field preparation uh, prevention measure uh, during special during field preparation. Then uh, sometimes you can add more organic matter, then the plants will be get more healthy and they might be very resistant to pests and diseases. Likewise. Uh, that's those are the tips for preventive measures. Then again, we can uh, follow field sanitation. It's a very important thing. Field sanitation means how clean uh, you maintain your garden. That means if your garden is very uh, uh, very messy and having a lot of uh, uh, different different uh, plant particles or pest or disease damage uh, plant uh, crops everywhere, and uh, there are some places with uh, uh, fallen leaves and uh, some compost pits are not properly maintained. So then, then this, uh, those places create very uh, good, uh, very uh, good favorable places for the insects, uh, especially the like uh, creatures like snails. So they used to uh, uh, hide in your all this uh, this uh, garbage. Then they, they try to come in out and uh, attack your plants. So that's why field sanitation is a, a very important factor in uh, disease prevention. And also if you uh, keep all the diseased uh, pest or disease attack plant particles in your garden, because some of the insects, they have a life cycle and some cycles they continue in the soil. So I will explain to you like, uh, uh, especially like uh, a fruit fly, uh, they have a pupae and larvae, larvae and pupae stage. So pupae stage, they complete in the soil, then the a uh, newly uh, born insect again comes to the environment after keeping a certain time period in the soil. So if we uh, keep all the pests uh, like a melon fly or fruit fly attack fruits on the ground, it, we are helping uh, the insect to continue its life cycle. So that's a very important thing, uh, especially uh, during field, uh, we need to implement uh, as a preventive measure when we are doing gardening. Then uh, it's another, there's another important thing is on seed production. 
because when we produce our own seeds in our own garden, that means we create, uh, we develop a seed from a very successful full fruit, uh, which have grown from our garden. That means that fruit is used to the local environment conditions of your garden and some uh, pretty much resistant to some pests and diseases in your garden. So it's having very good uh, positive vibes or positive uh, feelings or positive uh, energy in those uh, fruits which have grown in your uh, garden. So if you uh, preserve them as seeds, then during the next season, they have some uh, ability to fight against the pests and commonly available diseases in your garden. So they have some inherent uh, uh, characteristics or inherent uh, strong genes uh, to fight and to uh, survive under harsh environment or harsh uh, uh, pest or disease condition. Then uh, when we discuss about control, uh, then again, we can do maintain several cultural practices. So like uh, uh, we can cultivate pest repellents like marigolds, like uh, crops like uh, basil. Uh, then uh, uh, we can uh, 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 set up some uh, lights to attract pests. So likewise, different cultural methods we can implement. Or sometimes uh, we can uh, add some smoke uh, to chase the pests away. So likewise, different uh, methods we can use to control pest uh, diseases. Then again, we can do mechanical control methods like catching them, uh, setting up some traps or manually catch them or likewise mechanical controls we can use. Then we can use chemical controls so that can be used, uh, we can use them using uh, available, commonly available chemical pesticides or insecticides, but we are not uh, going to discuss them further, but we can prepare our own pesticides or we can our, prepare our own pest repellents, especially during home garden, garden. so I will be explaining them in, in next slide. So we can I make our own, uh, this is uh, uh, our own pesticides or own pest, pest repellents to overcome all these uh, issues raised by pests. Then uh, this is the importance of uh, uh, nursery management. So during nurseries, uh, nurseries, as I mentioned again and again, I mentioned before and I'm telling it again and again, avoid, avoid too much density because you, uh, you put, uh, large number of seeds in a small container, then the plants grow in a very uh, dense environment. So when a disease comes, it spreads uh, very easily because uh, uh, there are no enough space uh, for aeration and it's like a, a compact environment. So it, disease can be easily spread to from one plant to another plant. Then avoid too much fertilizer, especially uh, if you add nitrogen, too much nitrogen fertilizer, then plants will be more succulent and more fleshy. And if you add, add more water also, plants are very fleshy, uh, then they feel uh, difficulties to, uh, uh, to fight against diseases. They are not uh, resistant to pest and diseases. Then uh, sunlight also we need to control because when a plant grows in too much shelter, uh, it's, again, it becomes very soft and uh, gentle. So it's very, uh, then the plant uh, feel difficulties uh, to survive under hard environment. Condition. Then again, soil media sterilization also very important. You need to use a uh, sterile soil or clean soil when you uh, set your nursery because otherwise some uh, uh, pathogens uh, can come to, to the nursery media if you are not sterile or if you are not using clean soil in nursery management. Okay, I think uh, all questions will be coming. So, yeah. We are tired with us as well. Um, So the core question is, what are the benefits of own seed production? Um, the answers are more resilient to pests and diseases, adapted to suit your own garden. That more, it's more cost effective. Um, or is it all of the above or none of the above? So Anurad actually uh, gave the answers to this core question just a little while ago. Um, let's see what everyone else has to say.
Uh, we can share the results now. Um, so 76% say all of the above. Yes, I think uh, all understood it really well. And I couldn't mention about the cost effective factor also. It's, it's not important to pest and disease control, but if you provide seeds on your own, and if you provide seeds, then you are uh, quite independent. Then you don't need to uh, depend on these food crises and all these issues every month or every season. So it's better if you can at least any type of crop, if you can preserve, you can keep one fruit without consuming as a seed. So it will be. Yeah, very uh, helpful for you. It in between your friends and you guys, so you can exchange. So these are the. Uh, common and uh, these are the good practices we can follow uh, during these hard times, especially in terms of uh, practices in, uh, related to home guard. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Okay, uh, so this is a very good example I can show you uh, regarding field sanitation. Because if you see this fruit, this is a, uh, this is a brinjal, uh, Fruit attacked by the But Uh, harvesting time, this was neglected. This is spreading the uh, the insect. Uh, our own uh, uh, gunders, you need to remove. So, pest attack the fruit, so any uh, disease attack fruit. And uh, either you can burn it or you can uh, dig a uh, pit and uh, uh, keep it uh, bury them. So, that kind of uh, methods you need to follow up, uh, especially uh, to maintain the field sanitation. Uh, uh, plantation. Then the other important thing is maintain cleanliness, especially around your plants. You need to uh, remove grasses because grasses can be uh, host plants for some insects, uh, as we discussed uh, in, in, during previous uh, sites in weed, weed management. So always keep your fields free from uh, crop residuals and always keep them uh, keep the surrounding clean as much as possible uh, when uh, you have time. This is a good. Uh, prevention technique. Then this is also a very important thing, uh, field preparation. So during the very first session also we discussed about this. So when you prepare your field uh, in some sort of a, uh, a plan, then you can avoid again pest and diseases because you are not growing uh, crops belongs to one family together. Like so if you if you take uh, chili, tomato, brinjol, they all belong to one uh, family. That means solanaceae. So always we need to uh, uh, plant crops in a in a mixed model, like bring uh, cabbage and bring jaw together, or octa and long beans together. Then if a pest comes to another, uh, if a pest comes to long beans, uh, it won't attack uh, bring jaws or octa. So uh, that kind of a model you can uh, uh, follow during the land preparation. Then naturally, uh, pests, uh, all diseases will be uh, controlled by uh, by uh, uh, mutual planting. That we we may call it as mutual planting. So some plant and companion planting because some crops uh, helps to control uh, some crops helping other crops while keep uh, acting as a barrier uh, or acting as a block uh, to for some pest and diseases. So it's very important uh, field uh, preparation as a preventive measure uh, when you design your home garden. Then uh, again, another thing, proper drainage, especially during the rainy times. If you now, if you, you can see this first picture, this is a, a poorly designed garden, or this is this is a, the sunken bed designed. Uh, during the dry spell, but due to uh, heavy rains, uh, these sunken beds uh, get filled with water. So 
So these uh, systems are not appropriate, especially during the rainy season. So you need to cut off water and avoid water logging condition. Then uh, this is the appropriate method, raised beds. So if you raise, uh, raise beds like this, all the surplus water will uh, drain through these uh, channels. So again, control shade or sunlight is so very important uh, because some diseases are spreading really fast under shady conditions and some crops are not growing well under shady conditions. So you need to always uh, control shade uh, for sunny loving crops or maintain shade for uh, shade loving crops. Then again, our one of the other mistake we do uh, during home gardening, we add too much water and too much fertilizer. So we think adding too much uh, fertilizer will help to uh, to develop a big fruit or increase the yield. That's not uh, happens always. So we need to uh, apply fertilizer according to the plant requirement. When you add surplus nitrogen, especially most of you, as for chilies, you add a lot of cow dung or poultry manure, a lot of compost. So then the chili leaves becoming more succulent. Then it's easy to, then these uh, leaves get easily attracted by white flies or other aphids, or uh, mostly aphids and white flies. So you need to maintain uh, uh, average fertilizer levels. Once you add too much compost or too much cow dung or poultry manure, your leaves will be more uh, greener and your leaves will be more fleshy and uh, leaves will become more larger in size. So you can see the difference if, if you're, when your plant is having too much nitrogen. So that is a, as a sign for uh, uh, immediate pest or disease attack because these are very succulent and too much uh, nitrogen containing in these uh, plant particles. So always try to avoid and try to treat plants according to their requirements. So again, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, mix cropping and crop rotation is very another important thing. So if you think, uh, see this picture, you can see uh, cauliflower over here, then other greens like rotucola and mukunwa and Some plant, chili plants here and long beans are here, sweet potato here, some mukunwa and okra, seed butter, turkey berries here. So, always keep uh, try to keep, uh, even your land size is small, try to prevent this, uh, try to uh, implement this kind of a model. Or if you're, you are having a large scale home garden, uh, try to use this kind of a model uh, to have a mixed cropping system to control uh, pest and disease. Okay. Then uh, this is also another important thing. So you can see cabbages and cauliflowers grown in this area. Then another lines of marigolds, what we call daspetia or marigolds, has grown in, uh, in parallel to the cabbage. So this is a walkway when people walk and then these plants get, can dis, uh, get disturbed, especially marigolds. Then some aromatic compound contains in the marigolds uh, uh, collects, uh, collects to the air. Uh, and uh, this will keep pest away. So this is uh, the this is what we call uh, cultivating natural pest repellent. So these are like uh, marigolds and basil and uh, ginger or uh, those kind of uh, crops which are having uh, or pungency or high having high uh, uh, some aromatic compounds. So they can uh, easily control pest and diseases. So try to always grow marigold plants, especially when you grow chili. Uh, in between your garden, so it will give you uh, some uh, aesthetic beauty because of the flowers, as well as uh, they will keep your uh, keep some pest away from your garden as well. Then uh, mechanical control, so it's another important factor when we do home garden. Easiest thing is hand picking. So if you see an insect, uh, especially when you uh, uh, grow uh, suspenia or pathis are very common. So when you see uh, some unusual uh, area of your leaves or any leaves curling or anything, so you can identify uh, or any any part of a plant is missing, you can identify it as a uh, caterpillar. So don't be shy and uh, 
you can uh, either you can use a glove or you can use the bare hand and you can pick them and uh, keep them away from your garden. Then again, uh, hand picking is a very much con uh, convenient method to control the uh, snails in your home garden. So you can trap them, uh, you can attract them if you put some beer into a, especially during a rainy day, into a small plate and uh, keep in the garden. Uh, snails will attract to it, then you can hand pick them and, to a, and keep it into a container, container and you can take them away from the garden. And always you can clean your garden. So snails used to like to hide underneath, especially when you have coconut husk or any other leaves or when you have any garbage pits. So clean them and try to pick them and take them away from uh, your garden. Then then another effective method is covering, especially when you grow gourds like bitter gourd, snake gourd, or bridge gourd or loofah and pumpkin or cucumber. So you can cover your fruits using either polythene or either using newspapers. So soon after flowering, you need to cover these plants. So once you cover uh, these, uh, uh, especially melon fly, uh, they cannot uh, come and attack your fruits. Especially even if you go guava in your garden, fruit prey uh, will come and attack. So covering of fruits is the easiest method uh, you can do in the garden. Uh, then again, you can uh, use this kind of covers uh, especially when you have uh, problems with porcupines, you can cover your plants like this uh, and uh, you can protect them. This is an empty uh, rice or fertilizer bag, polysac bag, so you can cover the plants like this. Then uh, you can use some traps, uh, especially during the uh, evening time around seven o'clock, uh, especially brinjal, podbora, and some other insect uh, like uh, butter, uh, butterflies of some or insects. They come and attract. So this is a uh, this picture I have taken at the Rice Research Institute. This is a light trap. Uh, some insects they come and attract to the light, and uh, they attract to the light. They uh, fell through this funnel and they collect to this bottle. So these kind of traps, then you can use grease traps uh, in your garden. So the aphids, mites, uh, they come and attack. Uh, they come and uh, stick to these uh, traps. You can uh, take. Uh, especially your uh, green or white, uh, sorry, yellow or white polishing strips, and you can apply this uh, layer on top of it and hang it. So then, uh, it's harmful insects, they come and stick to these uh, grease traps. Then again, you can use some uh, physical methods like keeping a scarecrow, sometimes birds uh, who comes to attack you, especially uh, long beans. Uh, they, uh, parrots love to come and eat long beans, so these kind of physical methods uh, will help you to control uh, pest damages in your garden. Next slide. Okay, next time again, time for a poll question. Yeah, so uh, the poll question is. What are the uh, what are some natural pest repellents? And please, uh, you have to select all the uh, relevant answers. The answers are five leaves mixture, ginger garlic mixture, tobacco and soap mixture, fresh cow dung, fungicide mixture, or all of above, or none of above. So let's see the choices of the participants. So as we can see, most of the participants think, uh, yeah, ginger garlic mixture. So what's the explanation for this question, Mr. Amrata? Yes, so of course, five leaf mixture. So I will explain you again, ginger garlic, tobacco, sometimes fresh cow dung also will act as a natural pest, but fungicide mixture is a fungicide we are not using, uh, we can use, but it's not natural. So it's it's very, uh, so different, uh, all the first three answers are uh, correct. And fresh countdown also will try, uh, time to time act as a 
natural pest repellent. So I will explain uh, if we can uh, use fresh cow dung mixture. Sometimes uh, uh, it's of course it's a very good uh, nitrogen uh, rich uh, liquid fertilizer. But sometimes when we apply it, uh, the thin cow dung layer will uh, keep uh, on top of the uh, uh, leaf layers of the plants. So that that layer will um, help to uh, uh, protect plant from especially some sometimes caterpillars or uh, insects like Epilacna or Aulacopora, that kind of uh, leaf eating uh, bugs. They won't uh, attack when there is a, a thin uh, cow dung layer on top of the plants. So then we we'll, let's discuss about natural pest repellents. So there are many many natural pest repellents. So when uh, the, this is the important thing of natural pest is we cannot tell uh, exact ratio or we cannot tell exact application ratio. We can, cannot tell exact uh, preparation ratio as well as exact application ratio based on the ingredients and based on your experience. These uh, all the applications can be uh, varies. So if you take a five leaf mixture, you can we can add uh, neem or a pavata, sometimes uh, uh, again uh, different uh, leaf uh, mixtures are available uh, like uh, lantana, what we call gandapana, so different uh, uh, leaves which are having high uh, uh, release area, high uh, uh, aroma, so we can add them, uh, collect them, we can uh, crush them and uh, we can make uh, into a mixture and apply because of these uh, properties. Uh, insects won't come and, attra and attack to these plants. Then is an, there's another uh, good mixture, uh, ginger and garlic. Uh, when, uh, when we uh, chop uh, ginger, garlic, uh, equal portions, sometimes we can add chili also. Uh, this, this becomes a very good uh, uh, formula, very strong formula. Then we can spray, dilute it with uh, equal portions of water. Then we can spray it. Then this will keep uh, pest away, uh, mostly uh, caterpillars and uh, uh, sucking insects like uh, aphids or uh, sometimes mites. Then and tobacco and smoke mixture also another uh, uh, mixture we can uh, prepare so we can uh, 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 take some uh, tobacco and uh, we can put some hot water and convert it to a, like a tea and we can add some small soap and we can spray it to the plant. So that's another natural uh, pest repellent method. Again, fresh cow dung also, as I mentioned before, we can make a, it as a very uh, dilute solution and we can spray it. Then uh, it will maintain a thin layer over the leaf surfaces. Uh, then we can use it. Again, neem seeds, another important thing, uh, important, uh, uh, natural pest repellents, especially uh, when we need to control uh, caterpillars. So we can collect neem seeds uh, during the you know, August season in uh, uh, flower uh, harvesting season. So we can uh, uh, neem seed product producing season. We can collect and uh, we can uh, crush them and keep uh, it for two, seven, two nights. Uh, then we can strain it and apply it to the plants. So uh, then. Uh, we can prevent uh, attacks of especially cabbage uh, leaf-eating caterpillars. We can uh, control uh, these kind of pests using this kind of a, uh, this uh, neem uh, extract. Uh, then uh, wood ash application. So it's another if you uh, see in the you see in this picture uh, during the early morning you, we can spread uh, wood ash uh, on top on the the insect damaged areas because wood ash is very uh, it's very powerful and it's uh, it's damaged the top surface of some caterpillars so we can naturally control uh, them uh, in that way also okay then we can use uh, chemical controls which i'm not uh, going to uh, discuss so there are insecticides available and fungicides available commercially, you can purchase them and apply them to the, your gardens. Uh, but I don't uh, recommend it because we, need, we try to do our home gardening to have a crop uh, free from pest or diseases. So free from uh, pesticides and insecticides. So if we again, if we uh, go to the market and uh, purchase these uh, chemical, 
the synthesized insecticides or pesticides and using them to our garden, again, we'll be eating the same uh, contaminated food. So I always try to prevent uh, using of these uh, chemical inputs when you do home gardening. Uh, then uh, before this, uh, I need to uh, give uh, one point, uh, uh, especially for home gardens. So any pest or disease won't happen overnight. So oh, frequent observation is very important if you are doing home gardening, uh, because uh, always if, when you visit the garden, at least as much, try to visit your garden as much as possible when you have a free time, then you will notice sudden changes or different uh, uh, shapes or when, uh, when you, if, if a seed, if a uh, leaf is attacked by a caterpillar, then you can identify the difference of the leaves. When you frequently visit in the garden, you will uh, see see the see all changes because when it's uh, the normal situation deviated, you can de definitely identify. It. So because the disease or pest will not uh, spread in your garden overnight. So if you can detect it early at the early stage without applying any pest or natural or chemical any pesticide or insecticide, you can control them uh, by your, your own without adding any uh, additional efforts. So always try to visit your gardens, always try to train your eye how to find uh, changes in your garden. So then using very simple mechanical methods, or then you can control any type of pest or, seed, uh, pest or disease in your garden. Okay, I think uh, this session I, uh, I'm going to complete it because most of you have a lot of questions. So I'm happy to give more time to answer, uh, especially questions regarding pest and disease. So uh, this time, uh, this is the uh, assessment trial. So you, you have to do, identify two pest or diseases in your own home garden and what a nature, natural pest uh, repellents or disease control mechanism can be used to repel or control that uh, pest or disease that you have identified from your own home garden. So if you have any trouble in identifying the pest or disease, please feel free to send us relevant images and we will assist you. So deadline for the assessment file is 15 June, June 2022. And you can send uh, this assessment to this uh, email address and fill in the feedback form that will be sent to you tomorrow. And uh, please uh, you, uh, send your uh, photographs of your home garden uh, to this email address also. So yeah, I think you might have a lot of questions rise mm -hmm. coming uh, when you are doing home gardening, please. Uh, Floor is open for you because I'm happy to answer. So we have come to the end of the today's session and our organic home garden series. Before we wind up, there are a few announcements. All the participants who have registered will receive the feedback form one day after the webinar please be sure to fill and submit the form. We would also like to highlight that for the assignments, you need to send, send in images uh, from your own home garden. Please refrain from uh, using images found online. And thank you to all participants for joining us today. Kindly note that we will be in touch with you within the month with regard to your certificates. Uh, I would like to thank you, Mr. Anuradha, on behalf of I'm the- I'm sorry for disturbing you. I think one question came from uh, one uh, 
participants. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Because we have time. Okay. I'm yeah. using Hyper V2 also as PCI. Yes, any, any, any type of uh, anything, because that's why I'm telling all this, we don't have any uh, rules or regulations regarding natural pest uh, suicide preparation. So if any, any plant particle, if you think, okay, this can be strong enough, so that's why there are some, especially like uh, we have identified some other order. I'm not, sorry, I'm not very familiar with the English terms. So other order, what we call Pavatta and Nikal, uh, then Gandapana, what we call as Lantana and uh, Ginger. Uh, then there are those uh, color well. So there are different types of uh, varieties, uh, uh, plants having uh, these kind of uh, natural chemicals. So if we can identify and if we can uh, extract that kind of, uh, that uh, chemicals from these plants and we can apply them after diluting it, definitely we can get uh, good results. So you either, either uh, piper beetle also another good uh, example. And always keep in your mind when you prepare uh, any solution because there are no recommendations try to uh, don't try to spray it or apply it to the entire field uh, because you, we don't know exact ratio of application so try to dilute in, into different ratios and apply it and uh, find out the exact uh, uh, ratio which is convenient for the plants without uh, burning oil and with, which will be giving a, a desirable uh, answer uh, to the pest or any uh, disease. So that's the thing uh, you need to always keep in mind. Feel free to do your own research and find out any uh, type of crop, uh, any type of plant particle. You can uh, make the mash extract or make, make the mash mixtures and spray any tan uh, apply to your uh, crops. That's why we are telling them mass. They are not insecticides, they are insect repellents. So based on these chemical properties or so based on these odors, uh, then uh, with others, insects, of, especially insects, will stay away from your plants. So uh, explain about biological pest control method. So this is biological pest control method is a very uh, vast area. So there are some uh, examples uh, which have been used, uh, at, uh, especially during uh, in the plantation sector, when uh, need to control some uh, some pests related to coconut, but in the, in terms of into home gardening, you can use biological control uh, pest control method. Like if you can keep a small, thank you very much for asking this question. Also, you can keep uh, some uh, leftover rice or any food particle fruits in a tray in somewhere in your garden. Then you can attract some birds to your garden. So. The birds like, uh, I think the magpies, uh, or that we, what we call uh, the malicha. Sorry if I, uh, I don't know the English term of the, this bird, typical, uh, particular bird. So they come, uh, come and they try to, they will be attracted uh, for those uh, leftover food. And uh, then, uh, then they will come and uh, pick all the uh, insects uh, in your plants. So it's a, it's a really good uh, example. Uh, to, uh, of biological pest control. Then we have uh, another pest called, another bird called Atikukula. So it's also very uh, friendly uh, bird for, especially for the farmers. They will come in and uh, 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 catch all the snails in your garden, snails and slugs in your garden. So that kind of uh, biological methods, that means one, one uh, creature helps to control another creature. So, and uh, sometimes a ladybug beetle, so if you see ladybug beetle in your, your garden, it's a very friendly uh, insect uh, because they, it eats all the aphids and mites in your plants. So mites and aphids are very tiny insects in, those, uh, in the plants, uh, especially in chili and uh, especially in chili plants. They, they are the ones who attack uh, and they are the root cause for the uh, chili uh, leaf curling complex also. And uh, aphids are very common in uh, when you grow long beans, you can see tiny black uh, dots, kind of uh, uh, insects all over the uh, stem particles. So these are ladybug beetles, they come and uh, control uh, them. So likewise, sometimes the oh, alligators, I think, uh, lizards, or oh, they will come and uh, attack uh, uh, all the pests. 
so this kind of natural balance you can keep inside uh, in your garden so all that this is a food chain system so one creature will contro uh, control another uh, uh, harmful pest uh, especially in the garden So, yeah, I think, yeah, I would like to thank you, Mr. Anurada, on behalf of Timothy and Dilma Conservation for curating this series and for your valuable time through the course. And again, I would like to ask the participants to send uh, the success of your home garden, home garden, uh, by following this organic home gardening course to uh, our email address. And with that, it's time to conclude our webinar for the day. And have a good day and stay safe.